I was talking the other day with a friend of mine about happiness, which is a great subject. And happiness is everybody's goal. But what most people don't get is that happiness is just a state of mind. It's not a goal. And that we already have a certain levels of happiness that we fulfill. And it is if we are, have some specific predetermined set point, as a natural happiness set point, how happy we are. But happiness is just interpretation in your mind and habitual conditioning. It doesn't change as much as we think. Happiness is not sensitive to our situation as we believe so. How many people do you know that no matter what happens to them, they're always happy? Or some are always grumpy or sad or depressed. That is habitual conditioning. Situation, yeah, they can influence temporary change in happiness, but they're not fixed element. And here's why. How about this? Think about what's the worst thing that can happen to you. For most people, the worst thing that can happen is to get paralyzed from neck down. Most of people will get depressed, miserable at first. But with time, their happiness comes back as it was before they got paralyzed. Depression and misery, due to their situation, had just temporary effect, but not the permanent one. My laddie, my best friend from Santa Barbara, is the happiest person I know on the planet. And he's been stuck in that wheelchair for as long as I know him. And I know him for over 20 years or more. And you will not believe the enthusiasm, the joy, the laughter, happiness that my laddie emits every time I see him. He basically glows. Well, that could also be my effect on him as well, but just joking. But Laddie is my great first-hand experience or example in my life that happiness comes from within. Or let's say, for an example, on the other hand, what is the best thing that can happen to you right now? Most people say, oh, if they win a million dollars in the lottery, they will really make it. You know, that will make them really, really happy. Yeah, you might be the happiest person alive. Yes, for the moment when you find out and once you hold that ticket or the money in your hands. But once you get the money and you get hab habituated to it, things will go back the way they were before. And also, another thing about lottery, lottery brings more trouble in the sense that people distance themselves from friends and family due to separation at an economical level, criticism, they get how they spend the money, what to do with it. And well, there's so many elements that change dynamics of relationships that, that do not produce a great effect. They can actually lead to depression that's even worse state than before they, they got the lottery winnings. But the bottom line is that we drastically overestimate the effects of external stimulus and situations. We buy things to get instant happiness, but that will just that will not hold for a long time. That does not have a permanent effect. Yeah, you buy a big house for the feeling of happiness and comfort. You want a super speed car to get the feeling of that fast drive, power. And happiness again. You want a good-looking spouse for the getting a feeling of happiness and accomplishment of being love. But all you want to do is to feel happy. But I tell you right now, you can get the feeling without the external stimulus. I'm just repeating this all the time. This is a very important thing because we use external stimulus as an excuse to keep our mood in adaptive habitual conditional state. In psychology, this is called effective forecasting. We are really bad in predicting how happy and sad we can be based on what's happening to us or in our environment. Basically, happiness is if you get something or not, doesn't really influence day-to-day -day relevance. It is out of picture. I have a friend of mine who believes that once he gets a girl he wants so badly, that he will then be the happiest man alive. Yeah, maybe for a day or two, maybe even for a week or two. But he's not taking into consideration that once he gets her, he will get used to the situation. He will get used to her. And once he gets to know each other better, she will express her flaws, a normal person does. And they will start to bottom eventually. And life will become the same in aspect of respect he gets from everybody else, including her. Day-to-day -day life goes on. You know, there's not much on TV that projects are... Um, you know, projects that he's working on may be rolling or maybe not as planned. So she will basically start to get on his nerves like everybody else. So he will have the, you know, regular insomnia. He likes to be as before as his happiness will go back to his conditioned thermometer. 
and that's a set point where he started at the first place. Also, in his case, there's other things involved. You know, he wants the things he can't get and wants attention of somebody who will not give it to him, projecting unsolved issues with his mom from the past. But all I want to say is that vanity is a very powerful thing. I explained earlier in other videos is the most powerful effect in psychology is basically hazing. The harder you get something, the more you will respect it and protect it. This effect is so exercised in Los Angeles that it's not even funny. You can't even get reservation in a club or restaurant if you don't have a referral. I'm just joking. I exaggerate this a bit because... But some places will not let you in even if you pay. Heck, last month I, last month I needed an agent in LA, in LA for some TV show and a film I'm working on. So being the European that does not know anything about film and music industry, I called the agencies directly. So they told me politely that they cannot help me if I don't have referral. So I'm like... Well, what happens if I'm straight off the boat? I don't know anybody in LA, but I have these genius ideas and the projects that will make you money. You know, you will still reject me. And her call, she's like, calm, you know, she answered, yes. In order to talk to us, you will need the people and referral. And I'm thinking like, <laughs> imagine my surprise. But I'm aware in a sense of psychological approach that does, that really does affect some people. So basically what I've done is send a group email to all of my friends to get me an agent. Well, now all doors are open, but we got in, but we're still looking for the right one. But that is why hazing is one of the most powerful tools in psychology. People will go to bad things just so they can belong somewhere, like in college. You know, they will make you stand on one leg on a rain for hours, or you make you do even worse things just so you can pass the test and belong to some club. And then we use the rationalization to justify our actions. We will even go out of our way to protect or justify our club or thing or person. And that's why we love the things we pay more for. Not because it is a better product than others, but since we pay more, we have to justify and we actually give the more attached meaning to it. Anyway, I went again off the subject, so I want to go back to happiness. So the most important message here is that happiness has nothing to do with external stimulus. Since we adopt, we get used to good and bad things. A friend of mine stated to me the other day, he said, oh, well, it's life. You know, I'm going to do this thing just for a while and then I'll go back to my old stuff, good life. Oh, well, maybe not. Since once he gets used to a new thing, it'd be much harder for him to change again. And if this is the syndrome of the boy leg, a frog, you know, how you put a frog in a warm water and it's kind of like saying, oh, it's like a jacuzzi, it's nice and warm, and then after it's becoming way too boiling, to the boiling point, it wants to pop out, but it cannot because it's paralyzed. And we all get used to the things. We all, and life, life flies very fast. There's no episodes. This is it. This is your life. So better to do something good from the very beginning, from the start, than to shift from one thing to the other and get used to them. Of course, there's some exempt, uh, exemptions uh, for the happiness, like the couple of things that influence our happiness in the long run, like um, you can never get used to bad noise, like construction or traffic, and that's why I never wonder why people in New York are hardly ever smiling all day long. But also there's also acceptance, um, surprising acceptance for happiness is basically effective of cosmetic surgery. Not just that it makes people happier at the beginning, but they actually stay happier for a long time since it's very important how we and how others see us. And that actually influences our happiness on the long run. Also, one more, one more thing that I almost forgot. And what's really important um, is not how much money you really make, but how much money you make in comparison to other people in your close environment like your income that's relative to the others. Like you have to make a little bit more money than anybody else you hang out with. Most people would rather accept to have $100 more than others in their surroundings than 10,000 more than if, but if others will make maybe 20,000 more than when they are. It's really funny, but we are basically um, attached to that rank, uh, rank in hierarchy and it does influence our level of happiness. Then also, we are also attached to this, um, I call it problem of adaptation, uh, basically hedonic treadmill. 
you know, sometimes no matter how hard we try to be happy, we always get used to certain things. So, for example, if you put the leg in your warm water or hot water, eventually we're going to get used to that th new temperature. So everything we aspire at once, you know, something that's like our dream, and once we get it, we get used to it, and it loses its value, especially when it comes to possession, possessions of things. We very quickly get used to them, and they lose a meaning for us. And that leaves us to conclusion that we have two options. One option is to always do different things, never get used to anything in life. Uh, Borevo, a friend of mine, stated, oh, I reinvent myself every two years, every two to three years. And he gets the challenge and satisfaction in the way in order to be happy. Or second option is to give it all up. Give all the external stimulus up. Just focus on an instant satisfaction on the small things around you and something that like brings you happiness right away. And of course, the relationships with friends and family and maybe long-term plans. So again, happiness is just relative. It doesn't mean anything but the meaning that you give it yourself. And here's a trick. It's all about interpretation. Um, listen to this experiment. They had two groups of monitored people. And they all, uh, they all were asked uh, how their general happiness in life is. So they placed them in a waiting room and one group found a penny prior to questioning on the floor. And everybody from that group stated in general they're happier than the people from a group that did not find a penny. So basically, some of them have interpretation like, oh, I'm a money magnet, you know, I'm lucky, or, and that just interpret that they're actually happier. Even though it was just a penny, they didn't find a million dollars, they just found something that symbolizes uh, wealth or happiness or luck. And basically, there, that's a purpose. All that matters, it's a matter of interpretation. Or... For an example, when they did the phone interviews on a sunny days, first they will ask the pe interviewers, what's the weather like? You know, and they will say, it's a nice sunny weather. Second question on the interview is how happy their life is in general. And most people will take in consideration their sunniness. So, and basically they will state in overall they're happier. So all I'm telling you right now, you can make up your mind on how happy you want to be. And then through your habitual conditioning, but only once you remove the negative charge and the base of a subconscious level with path methodologies that I already explained, they will actually clean up all your blockages. And then you can condition any state of happiness you choose. And also, I often say to be very careful with positive psychology and law of attraction unless you clean up your negative subconscious programmings and blockages. That's the base of your life. Otherwise, you are basing all your positive buildup on a negative foundation, and that never works. might work for a while, but then you hit the floor like no other. That's why people who do not clean up their negative program are happy for a short time, but then they really go down like they hit the floor like no other. And once down, it's very hard to get up afterwards. Positivity is funny movement in, from one perspective, since most of people build up their positivity on a muscle. You see, they're building positivity on a negative base without removing the energy charge from a negative base. And then foundation of the positive movement is basically based on negativity, which they run away from because it's hard for them to deal with. So we choose to suppress it or... But it will always come back eventually, in the worst time ever, when least expected. That's why it is so important to clean up all the blockages in programs that does not serve you any longer, including the belief system. And you have all of this in my video, other video presentations. Because I always use an example. For an example, if I want to have a relationship with a man of my dreams, and I want to have that relationship because I don't want to feel lonely, that means that perfect guy can come along, but that relationship is doomed to fail because base of my re base of that relationship will be the loneliness. That's foundation. So sooner or later, it's meant to fail.